It's been eight months since the March 11 disaster in northeastern Japan, but there's still a long way to go before full-fledged reconstruction can be carried out. Police say close to 20,000 people have been confirmed dead or remain missing as of November 10th. 15,770 people are confirmed dead and 3,648 remain missing in the devastated prefectures of Miyagi, Iwate and Fukushima. Reconstruction plans for the disaster hit areas have been drawn up by eight local governments in Iwate and seven in Miyagi. The government's newly established rebuilding subsidies and other funds will shoulder all costs for relocation of residents to higher ground or inland regions. However, no criterion has been set to assess the value of flooded land the government will purchase from owners. Local residents will need more time to form a consensus on mass relocations and reconstruction projects. Many residents worry every day about radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Now the Japanese cabinet has endorsed a basic plan on cleaning up the radioactive fallout. The central government will be responsible for decontaminating the no-entry and evacuation zones. Radiation levels in these areas are especially high. Local municipalities will plan and carry out the cleanups in other affected areas. The central government will pay their bills. The plan says decontamination work will be carried out in areas where the annual radiation exposure reaches one millisievert or more. The Environment Ministry aims to cut radiation levels by about half within two years in areas where the annual radiation is below 20 millisieverts. The reduction target is raised to around 60 percent in schools and parks where children spend a lot of time. This is the very first step to carry out the decontamination work. Hosono says he wants to hold thorough discussions with municipalities before the cleanup begins. Japan, the lower house of parliament has passed a third supplementary budget to promote reconstruction following the March 11th disaster and to also tackle the strong yen. The draft budget totals $154 billion. It earmarks $20 billion of those dollars to subsidize local rebuilding projects and $3.2 billion for radioactivity decontamination efforts. Another $6.4 billion is earmarked to Japanese companies for building new plants around the country. This is to prevent the hollowing out of domestic industry from the super strong yen. The bill was sent to the upper house for approval. More than 15 workers at the Idaho National Laboratory were exposed to low-level radiation today. Officials say the 17 employees were working inside one of the facility's reactors when a container holding plutonium was opened and exposed them to radiation. The workers underwent decontamination procedures before being taken to Lab's Medical Center for evaluation. INL says there is no evidence that radiation was released outside the facility and there is no risk for the public or the And another major company has been in the dock in France over the hacking of computers belonging to environmental activists. The energy giant EDF has been handed a one and a half million euro fine and had two of its executives sentenced to prison for engaging in a spying operation against Greenpeace. A court in Paris also jailed the head of a firm hired by EDF to compile a dossier on Greenpeace UK at the time the firm was attempting to enter the British nuclear energy market. Our science correspondent Tom Clark reports now from Paris. It's the world's largest operator of nuclear reactors, not just in France, but in Britain, where it has more than five million energy customers. But EDF has just broken another record. It's received one of the largest fines in French corporate history for hacking into the computers of environmental group Greenpeace. This court today ruled the company was morally responsible in a case of industrial espionage right out of the pages of spy fiction. 
Two former executives received prison terms and the company was fined one and a half million euros. Alors, une décision, euh, lourde de conséquences. This verdict has serious implications. The punishment is extremely severe. The 1.5 million euro fine given to EDF is one of the largest ever given to a company in France. All the accused have received prison sentences, which signifies that the court wanted to show the importance and severity of breaking the law in this way. The conspiracy began here at a cafe in Place Saint-Augustin. The court heard how in 2005, former French intelligence officer Thierry Laurent, head of Paris-based security company Cargus Consultant, arranged a meeting between computer hacker Alain Quiraud and the then director of security at EDF. The computer hacker told investigators that at the meeting at the cafe, he was directly asked to help gain access to Greenpeace's computers. He was subsequently sent a list of email addresses and keywords to help target his attack. He even described how he used the back of a napkin to draw out how a Trojan horse virus would be used to breach security systems and get access to confidential documents. Placed on the computer of a senior Greenpeace campaigner at their Paris headquarters, the Trojan horse allowed the hacker to log individual keystrokes. That gave him access to passwords, through them, emails and confidential documents. The hacked campaigner was working on EDF's new nuclear plant design, the EPR. It's facing cost overruns and delays where it's being built in Normandy. The same design is due to be built in the UK. The campaigner is now a member of the European Parliament. The will of EDF was to know what type of information Greenpeace and myself uh, add about the EPR and especially the safety and security problems of the EPR. Now it's not only an industrial bankrupt, it's not only a financial bankrupt, but it's also a moral bankrupt. Seen here leaving court a hacker Alain Quiraud, the head of Cargus consultant Thierry Laurent, and the two former security chiefs at EDF, Pascal Durieux and Pierre-Paul Francois. All were handed jail sentences of up to three years for their part in the hacking. During the trial, it also emerged Cargus drew up a 100-page report on Greenpeace UK for EDF. Given EDF's key role in Britain's future energy supply, we asked the Department of Energy and Climate Change for a response to the judgment. They declined to comment. So too did EDF. Its lawyer told us today it would appeal the judgment. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News in Paris.